Hi everyone and welcome to another chemistry video. What we're going to be doing today is to look at combining the information from both infrared and NMR spectra to actually give us some really detailed information about the structure of an organic molecule. Now it's not going to give us everything we need. We really need the mass spectrum as well to fill in some of those gaps. But it's going to make a start. So here's an example. Let's imagine we're looking at these two spectra. These are two spectra for the same compound. So the IR spectra on the top and the NMR spectra on the bottom. On the right hand side is a reference list of um, NMR chemical shift data. So that can tell us some things. But the first thing I want to do is to actually have a look at these two spectra. Look and see what information we've got. Okay, so in the IR spectra, you can look at that. And the first thing that you might see, if you're looking in that 3000 to 4000 wave number range, is there is a bit of a funny looking peak at around about 3400 wave numbers. Now that could be from a primary amine, or it could just be a bit of a random artifact. The other thing that really jumps out, at least it jumps out to me, is the very strong peak at about 1730 wave numbers, which is indicative of probably an aldehyde or a ketone. Now if we then jump down to the NMR spectrum, there's two things that are really, maybe three things that are quite useful here. The first one is that there are four peaks which means that there are four unique carbon environments. One of those peaks is up just over 200 ppm, so about 205 ppm. And that is indicative of either an aldehyde or a ketone. So that ties in really nicely with what we're seeing in the IR spectrum. Um, the other thing that kind of stands out is if you have a look at the two peaks down at about 25 ppm, you'll see that one of them is double the height of the other. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that you have two carbons in that same carbon environment, but it might, depending on what other information you have. Okay, so let's have a look at this systematically. The first thing we have is we have obviously got some carbons and hydrogens. So you can see that in the IR spectrum, we've got that ugly looking peak spiky one that represents the carbon hydrogen bonds and similarly in the NMR spectrum we can see those two peaks both at around about 20 ppm 25 ppm which represent CH3s and CH2s so that, that's as expected the next thing we have or we don't have I should say is we don't have carbon-carbon double bonds, okay? Because there's no peak at about 1650, 1680 on the IR spectrum, and there's no peaks in that 100 to 150 range in the NMR. Okay, next thing gets slightly trickier, but we don't have an OH group because there's no big symmetrical peak in the IR. There is a peak in the NMR at about 50, just over 50 ppm. And that might be indicative of an OH group if there had been something similar in the IR to support that. There's not, so we will have to take a bit of time to figure out what that might be. So with no OH peak, we know it's not a carboxylic acid, we know it's not an alcohol. Um, there's also nothing in that sort of 170 to 200 ppm range in the NMR spectrum. So we know it's not an ester, an acyl chloride, an amide. It's none of those things. So figuring out what is absent is just as important as figuring out what is present. So what else have we got? We have that little peak at about 3,400, could be an NH, but there's nothing really to support the idea of an NH from the NMR spectrum. 
the math spec would confirm that for us definitively, but we don't have the math spec yet. Okay, so what else have we got? Well, we have that peak at about 205 on the NMR. Now that could be for an aldehyde or a ketone. Both of those will fall into that range. Similarly, we have a peak at 17.20 or thereabouts on the IR. And again, that could be an aldehyde or a ketone. But more importantly, we've got that little shoulder peak at the side, about 2700, 2800 on the IR. That is really indicative of an aldehyde. So at this point, I'd be inclined to say this is probably an aldehyde. It's either four carbons long or it's got five carbons with a branch at the end. And in fact, we know that it's not an ester. It's not an amide or an amine. It is, in fact, an aldehyde. And you can see the structure down there. OK, so that's one example. Let's have a look at another one. OK, this one is also interesting. It has very similar information in a lot of respects to the previous spectrum. But what's different about it, first off, is that there is no shoulder peak on the carbon-hydrogen peak, so it's not an aldehyde. We have a peak at about 210 ppm in the NMR spectrum, which is strongly indicative of a ketone, as is the peak at about 1710, 1720 on the IR. There's not really much else present in either of those spectra. There's four peaks in the NMR, so that would indicate perhaps four carbons. They're all roughly the same size. So I would be inclined to think this was most likely butanone. But let's have a look. OK, so we've definitely got an alcohol, um, carbon hydrogen stuff. It's definitely not an alkene. Because there's nothing in the NMR to indicate that it's an alkene. It's definitely not an alcohol. It's definitely not an ester, an acyl chloride, a carboxylic acid, or an amide. It could be an aldehyde or a ketone, but at 210 ppm, it is more likely to be a ketone than an aldehyde, particularly since there's no shoulder peak on the CH peak at the IR spectrum. It's almost certainly not an ester. So the logical conclusion is that we have, as I said, a ketone, four carbons. This one's butanone. Next example. This one's a little bit different. This one has five peaks in the NMR spectrum. And there's a few interesting things in this one. So we have a peak at about, uh, what are we, about 177 ppm there. So that could indicate an ester, could indicate an amide, could indicate a carboxylic acid. It's almost certainly not an aldehyde or a ketone. We've also got a peak at about 60 parts per million. And that is most likely to be a carbon oxygen peak. And this is strongly making me think this is an ester. We've also got the peak at about 1740 on the IR spectrum, which again is about the range that I would expect to see for an ester. So. Um, my first thinking would be this is an ester. I'm also noticing that the peak at about 20 ppm on the NMR spectrum is about twice as high as the ones beside it. So that could indicate that there is actually um, 
some symmetry in the molecule so that we've got two carbons with the same carbon environment. Let's have a look. So first off, we definitely have alkyl groups. Okay, we've got carbon hydrogen groups. That's not surprising. We don't have any alkenes because there's nothing in that range. We don't have any alcohols because there's no alcohol peak, there's no carboxylic acid peak, and there's no amine or amide peak. So it can't be any of those. We have a carbonyl group showing up in the IR spectrum, which could be an aldehyde, a ketone, or an ester. And there is a similar peak in the IR, and in the NMR, I should say, which could be an ester, an acyl chloride, a carboxylic acid, or an amide. But we've already ruled out the carboxylic acid and the amide because of what's not present in the IR spectrum. Okay, acyl chloride. There's not a lot of evidence to support it being an acyl chloride. So what else have we got then? We have that carbon-oxygen bond, and we have probably some other carbons, or CH2s, CH3s. And this one, as I said, is an ester, and it has actually got a branch chain on the end of it as well. Okay. Here is the last one that I'm going to look at tonight, or today. And this one is also very distinctive. This one has my favourite fat and ugly peak present, which means that it is almost certainly going to have a carboxylic acid. So we've got a very broad peak at the top of the IR. We've also got a carbonyl group showing in the IR at about 1710. There's the peak at 180 in the NMR, which is also indicative of a carboxylic acid. And you've got the peak at about 20 ppm in the NMR, which indicates that you could have two carbons in the same carbon environment. So let's see. Okay, we've got an alkyl group, yes. No evidence for carbon-carbon double bond because there's nothing in the NMR to support that. There is, however, the carboxylic acid peak and the carbonyl group and the peak in the NMR. So all of that working together. There's four peaks in the NMR, which means there has to be a minimum of four carbon atoms. There could be five carbon atoms, but there can be no less than four. And so there is our carboxylic acid. It is exactly as suggested, four carbon environments, carboxylic acid. Okay, I hope this has started to give you a bit of a feel for how you work through these problems. Uh, there will be plenty more for you to have a look at in class. So I look forward to seeing how you go with those.